Hello and welcome to the Outcast. I'm your host, HC. With me is... Wolf. And we are back to the world of Godzilla with the new anime series. That was kind of unexpected and honestly interesting direction to go in. But okay, here we are. Uh, Godzilla Singular Point, the first anime series uh, for, for Godzilla, which again, he had two animated series before, but uh, he... Yeah, like uh, there were two American animated series. One was done by Hanna Barbera in the seventies, eighties, I think, and the other was based on the nineteen ninety eight movie that we should not speak of because it's not Godzilla, as we established. You mean best Godzilla? No, shut up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, this is the first time Godzilla had an anime series, which is interesting considering it's a Japanese property. So, uh, yeah. better late than never. Yeah, so, better wait. Never. Huh. Yeah. America animated, the West animated this before Japan did. That's surprising. Yeah. In, you know, and also kind of ironic, if you really think about it. I guess to them, Godzilla's always been one of those, like, costume style things. So, they would never take that away. And if you animate it, you kind of take that costume style thing away from it. So, I, I guess. Yes. But at the same time, considering how big it is, wouldn't you expect to see this happening earlier? True. Especially, but, with, especially but, with other stuff. It's worth but, noting, this is funded by Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like this is... And, you know, it's interesting because from what I know, this aired in Japan on actual TV, like weekly, as mm. any other show. And was only then brought to Netflix. So they licensed Again, it. Okay. I am not entirely sure. I think also Netflix is just kind of like the worldwide distributor to this because because if you recall if you recall the anime trilogy, which I won't blame you if you won't because they are not that interesting. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, we, we we're wrong. It has had an anime before HC. I forgot about that. <laughs> there was. Oh, oh, you're talking... Okay, I talk about a series, not a movie. I want to know. Fair, A fair. series. Uh, like, uh, so, you know, uh, but since uh, Netflix uh, distributed the, those movies, I can see how it probably just got scrolled around into doing this. So, because I should remind you, the anime trilogy was theoretically released in Japan. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Make of it as you will. But anyway, we are here to talk about Godzilla Singular Point. And man, talk about a show that on the one hand, I love the idea on paper and I love some of the stuff it does in execution. But also, man, talk about the stuff I don't get on paper and I don't get with the execution. Like this is this is one of those shows that Honestly, even though I kind of had fun with it at points, there were also so many points where I was just frustrated because I'll say this right now, you can tell that this is the first attempt to put a Godzilla story into a show because this drags at some point. Like, if this was a movie, it could have been better, if you ask me. But that's my opinion. What do you think? Well, I, I want to start off first with the animation because, I mean, whether you like or hate the show, it is beautiful looking, in my opinion. No, animation is great. Let's, and, say, uh, let, let's yeah, like, say that. Yeah, yeah. It, and that's not surprising considering it's made by Studio Bones and Studio Orange. And if mm -hmm. you don't know, Bones are the people behind uh, Bungo Stray Dogs, My Hero Academia, Full Metal mm -hmm. Alchemist Brotherhood, Soul Eater... And Basically, they many. did a lot of uh, yeah. They did a lot of good stuff. Yeah, they've done a I lot of good stuff. But it's also by but it was also animated by Studio Orange, who, if you remember, are the people behind B Stars, a show we've covered, and season two is out. We'll get there, and wink, wink. probably one of the better three D animation, like computer generated, like CGI three D animations that have been out there. Land of the Lustrous as well. 
I was gonna ask you if Studio OMG is responsible for the CG on the monsters. Yeah, because... I, I okay. assume so. It doesn't. I don't think it specifies who did what, but mm -hmm. I can. I think Orange were the ones behind the monsters. Like you can tell, there's a difference in style there. Which I think mm -hmm. works for this show. It, it very much contrasts kind of the otherworldliness of the monsters, right? Because yeah, uh, the I story... will say this: I, I, I really enjoy the animation, and I like uh, like both the hand drawn parts and the CG parts mm -hmm. uh, look great, and it all they meshes also... very well. Yeah, and yeah, they mesh really well. But one thing that I just have to point out. Like a kind of like Shin Godzilla. Godzilla has has two forms in this. Uh, uh, one that's like technically yes, like uh, four. <laughs> uh, well, it, it, but like the first one, I don't like. I hated that face. That face killed the entire design for me. <laughs> Are you do you, the first by the first one? Do you mean the one where he's the swimming <laughs> one, the one with flippers? Uh, no, the, no, that he has this iguana face with the with the horn on the head. It's like yes, that one. Okay, what, <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm like, and like they played the music, and I'm like, no way, this is Godzilla. It can't be. It just can't. And then they say we call it Godzilla. And it's like no. I'll admit no. that one. Like uh, like he wasn't on screen long. They eventually changed forms pretty quick, but it's still like yeah. Huh, so but, that's supposed but, to, I, I admit I was very much the same. It's like, huh, that's supposed to be our Godzilla. Okay, well, because <laughs> again, don't get me wrong. I have no, I have no problem with like updating the design, especially when it's a character that's been around for as long as Godzilla was. But this was like I admit. It, it has too, too far too fast. It has flabbergasted me how much like everyone has to have their spin on the godzilla design no one's like no we gotta go at the original all the time no one's like you know like the original like the original works it's good right but everybody's yeah. like no 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 no, no. we gotta have our spin on it. we gotta change it ever so slightly and yeah, almost every change keep... is yeah. yeah but at the same time like but like if you look at the legendary godzilla even if it has its own spin on it it still looks like Godzilla, even like, and even in the Tom movies, like even like uh, the Millennium Godzilla kind of comes to mind. It looks different, but you can look at it and say, "Yeah, that's Godzilla." It's not whatever the hell that head was. I mean, eventually the the, the show did get there. It did give us Godzilla. Yeah, it did, and you know, and, um, the design he, he eventually has, which you know is supposed to be the the final design that looks like Godzilla for it, like it looks like a decent update to what we know so yeah but I just want to point out that when I saw that first one I was like oh no no I, I get you completely I was very much like huh so that's Godzilla all right and I kind of laughed a little bit because it was very goofy looking and I kind of loved it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would of course you would I think we like <laughs> Uh, but before we get too heavy into like what monsters yeah. do we see and not see yeah, my opinion on the show i enjoyed my time with it i think if there's one thing i would say the show does right it has a bit of a mystery hook running for a yeah. decent length of it and i think it Which nails is... the mystery hook like it keeps you yeah. wanting to know more like you're always like okay if that means this then that means this like you're, you're trying to solve it with them to yeah, some I'm degree not... I'm not entirely sure if mystery is the right word that I'd use, but like in terms of law, in terms of law yeah. and the story itself and how it progresses, that's great. That's one of the parts I like about it. That it's that you know just because it's actually a continuing story that lasts throughout all thirteen episodes, but it's also that you know some things about it which we'll get to later. But it, it, okay. it's it's so. definitely it definitely. It's definitely building to something, and you're trying to kind of figure out what along with the characters, right? Mm -hmm. which, which, and again, I think it does that quite well. The problem I would say I had with it, and I would say, I'd, again, I enjoyed my time with it, but at the same time, I don't know if I'd say it dragged, but I do kind of get where you're coming from that, in that I would say that it... It just throws a lot at you for 13 episodes, mm -hmm. information and lore-wise, yeah. kind of, that 
mm-hmm. you're trying to keep it all together in your head and that's like a bunch of science stuff that they're doing and it feels like mm-hmm. there's kind of three characters here going on their own kind of journeys and one mm-hmm. of them their journey kind of peters off into another character's journey and then they all three kind of join back up at the very end but very loosely though yeah very, very loosely. loosely again it feels like you're following technically kind of three different stories mm-hmm. but you're not yeah. and all three of these characters are figuring out different pieces of the story in different and, ways yeah and not only that i would also say because since you mentioned the science stuff and throwing a lot out to you you know again this is what i mean by maybe it would have worked better as a movie because you know this is a this is a 13 episode season each episode is around 22 minutes so do the math to how to how many hours that is in a movie you are, you kind of know that you have that hour and a half, two hours, and then you're done. So, so you know, when they try to explain sciencey stuff in the movie, it's a, it's mostly like, okay, like uh, this thing with this thing created that thing, and because this one, this one, like even if you don't really get science, which I don't, I'm a dumb, I'm a dumb uh, guy. I mean, uh, when like we say can... science, it's probably like you know made up Hollywood science style stuff. You know, this is all jumbo yeah. nonsense. But yeah, but still, you know, when they talk, when they talk about equations and all, and all that sort of stuff, like not a, even if it's very Hollywood science, it still uses terms and words that you'll find in it actual. It feels science. real. It feels real. <laughs> I Which suppose. is good enough. I can believe yeah. that it was real. If a scientist came up to me and said, oh, no, this is completely accurate science. There's nothing fake about any of this. All of this is possible. I'd be like, okay, sure. I believe you. Yeah, yeah I'll believe you, but... I can't disprove uh, you, so I believe you. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I'll believe you, but only because I can't disagree. Uh, but, okay, forget, forget about how real or accurate this is, because obviously some liberties were taken, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But it's also a matter of no matter what kind of science you're talking about, be it the most fictional thing or actual science, if, for a person in a in again in a movie where you know that you get to two hours and you're done, you kind of want to rush through it a bit, like make like give the explanation, but also not dwell too much into what every line means, every theory means. Because you need to get the story along and you need to get to the good stuff. Here, it, here again, because they have to fill up 13 episode, episodes of this thing. So it feels like they're relying on all the science explanation they could provide to you to, ex- to artificially expand the running time. And at some point, it's like, I'm, I, I appreciate that you're trying to make sense of this and you're trying to ground it in some sort of realism, but also I want to see monsters fight and buildings go boom. Can we get to that? Fair. Very fair. <laughs> and we do get to that eventually. Like, yeah. my other problem I would say I had with it is uh, suppose you know we we have two main characters, right? You know, May, Kamino, yes. and Yun Arakawa. Those are kind of like our main characters. Those are the two characters mm-hmm. we're going to be following around, and they're the ones who are solving the puzzle and all of that jazz. Yeah, and honestly, but... fine characters. All things, all things considered, I like them both. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I will say that I prefer May just a bit, but it's also because she kind of looks like one of my friends. And the friend confirmed that she looks like hell. So oh no, that's May's something. adorable. But I, I think you... my only May is absolutely adorable. May is absolutely adorable. But I, my my issue is is I don't feel like any of the characters really stand out, right? Their You've designs, seen these people before. Their designs you... stand out, but the characters like none of the characters were like, all right, yeah, this character I can get behind this character. Yeah, May I kind of like like at least. In front, com- comparing to the main characters, because they feel very both very similar in the fact that you know, like, hey, these are you know science people. They're kind of the nerd people. You know, they're a little bit different. They're quirky and blah blah blah. And you know, I I think the only characters that really stood out to me as like this is a character. This is someone who is just absolutely ridiculous. Is a you know the Professor BB, 
Beric yes. Byrne and his daughter Lena Byrne. Because Byrne's. of his face. Because yeah. of his face. His well, face yes. Like... Completely true. <laughs> the, the, his facial expressions are just wow, beautiful. I love them. And especially, like, he, you can tell this is just crazy scientist dude. But he's actually a good guy, not an evil guy, but he's just crazy. Yeah, scientist, which was surprising dude. because I saw that first. I'm like, bad guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, should we give a spoiler warning already? Um... Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, uh, overall, right? I would say I enjoyed my time with it. I think if you're a fan of Godzilla, you'll probably enjoy this. If you're not, you might go into it going, huh? Quite a lot. I, I would recommend. Probably, I have not watched the English dub of this. I don't know how good or bad it I is. I haven't as well. But I would say, considering I had to do a lot of reading for this one to kind of be able to follow along with a lot of what's going on, that yeah. the Japanese dub for this one may not be as good just because you have to do so much reading. I, nothing wrong with the I... voice, Japanese voice actors. I think they did great. I just... <laughs> don't know if it works as well for this one in this one case i will say that for another godzilla version and you know we got a lot of versions from the ground up like you know we have the legendary one we have the you know there were there was shin godzilla there was there was the anime trilogy there, <laughs> we got so many versions of godzilla which don't rely on anything that are just straight up reboots Mm -hmm. That and that I will say having another one which which honestly takes a really interesting a, a really interesting and also kind of unique uh, unique yeah. direction with, with it. Very much so, yeah. I would say that I would say that for fans do check it out. Don't think it's gonna change the way a Godzilla story is going to be told. Don't uh, don't look at this as this is this is how the future of this franchise should be. But I think you'll go in and you'll have fun with what you see, even if some of it, even if the execution is a bit clunky. But if you're not a fan of Godzilla, I'm not sure this is a good starting point. No, would it, no, would it turn you into a fan? At least I don't think. Fair, fair. So, so spoilers in three, two, one. Still here? Okay, let's talk about the fact that throughout half of this show, Godzilla is not even on screen. I, I mean, I think he kind of, let me check something. Uh, yeah, he kind of appears up around episode five. You see a glimpse of him and then don't see him it's again until, you know... Episode 7 is where he officially shows yeah. up with the yeah. Inguana face and you're like, the hell is that? The <laughs> oh, this is what we're doing. Okay. But I will say this. Th because this thing kind of sums up my overall thing that, you know, I have no problem with building up Godzilla. Mm -hmm. now, especially, especially if it's a reboot and, you know, and again, we're not relying on the first movie only or something that can be... Like, this is just a straight-up reboot. I have no problem with building him up. And again, I think the build-up for him is great. It's great that we actually... Because we hear his name. We hear that, he's, that he has some sort of part to play with all the monsters just showing up in this, you know, in Japan all of a sudden. You know, you you are kind of getting the fact that the, that he has that he has some sort of powerful meaning behind him, and I like it that we don't see him right away. It takes a bit of time. With that said, I think it's a bit of a problem when the title character doesn't show up until halfway through. And I, mean, I will, and I will tell you right now that if this show wasn't necessarily called Godzilla, it was called like Kaiju Singular Point. Singular point. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that works too. You know, That's better. Like maybe Kai, like either either point out that, that these are Kaiju's or just Singular Point or something. I think it would have worked better because then they're already preparing you. Godzilla is coming, and you're awaiting the, and you're awaiting the the appearance of him because you know that you can't really make a kaiju story without him he is the king after all but, uh, but when kaiju but singular when you, point wouldn't sell as well as godzilla yes but 
sometimes you need to sacrifice <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. Fair. Also, Fair. Uh, but because again, we we do get some, we do get a lot of monsters, and like we get Rodan, we get uh, we get Andres, we get the yeah. snake, kind of. Yeah, you we, know, get we get the snake. snake we, we get, get uh, we get the spider. Yeah, we get and... spiders. We got Salunga. Is that supposed to be? I was going to ask you. Is Salunga is supposed to be their version of King Kong. Because it kind of uh, looks like an ape, kind yeah, of. You know, and then because you know, there's also I think it's a new monster. I'm not sure that ah. that and not uh, not necessarily the solving the thing like the catastrophe. You know, the thing that they are uh, that they have this bomb that they are experimenting with, and it uh, just like uh, impels him, but then turns out he, it's I'll alive. I'll get to that one. <laughs> Yeah, but I think this one is new for the record. I I don't recall it from the previous movies. Okay. So the only thing I knew is that a... seeing Salunga when he attacks because he's like the creature that kind of looks like a monkey, but he has a big horn on his head, right? Yeah. Like I was like, I was like, <laughs> is that supposed to be King Kong? Because it kind of looks like King Kong, but then it definitely does not look like King Kong. So I don't uh, know. Uh, if... it, it, it's obvious. I think it's obvious because I again uh, the Salunga. I don't think it's a uh, it's a previous monster as well. I don't remember anything, but it does look a bit like you know uh, King Kong asked for too much money, so we got this guy. Mm. I, and we also see, I guess, like the beginning of Mothra because we see like some moths yeah. as well. Oh, that that made me laugh so hard because actually before we uh, talk about this. Jet Jaguar is back, baby. Yes, kind of our kind of a main <laughs> character in this one, actually. Jet Jaguar is. Yeah, and that's it. I was really surprised by that. That you know, we didn't see him since the show era of Godzilla. You know, honest, the very first. This is kind of first, his show, not really Godzilla's. <laughs> yeah, again, and suddenly, not only is he back, but he's also like the main thing they are fighting Kaiju with, and he actually gets some character development because he's just. A robot the humans control but then he gets the, an ai which uh, and he starts to learn and he's kicking it out of us and it's like holy shit we brought Jack jaguar back and he's back with a fucking vengeance yeah yes for someone who's not seen that much of him this was a lot of fun and honestly no one has seen uh, that much out of him anyway he, he, he had the, he had the one movie and that's it Oof, poor Jet Jaguar. But yeah, like it was interesting. Uh, uh, although, it's, although you know, it is. Yeah, uh, it is better though than when Germany advertised him as King Kong in a robot suit. I'll give them that. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> this still cracks me up. <laughs> Germany just also had this thing where every monster that Godzilla fight was just created by Frankenstein. For I don't know if there's any reason for it, but okay. Frankenstein's the ultimate kaiju, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. And I just, I just found it ridiculous that this one scientist is just making random big ass monsters for Godzilla to fight. What is it? That, what is he a Pokemon thing? He wants to tra He wants to push him to the limit. Never know. <laughs> I, I can kind of see it since Frankenstein's supposed to be like a monster, so I guess I can get where they're coming from. It's different, but it, eh. Uh, okay. Uh, enough about that. Back to the show. So, yeah, uh, so I'm, because, you know, so Jet Jaguar, Jaguar is playing with that uh, butterfly, and they're like, oh, that's not a butterfly, that's a moth. And I'm like, ah, I see what you're doing there, and then mm -hmm. Mothra doesn't show up. <laughs> Yeah, I thought the big, like, reveal at the end was going to be, like, you know, because the thing they're searching for is a way to, because, uh, I guess... Stop we, the end should, of the world, basically. Yeah, stop the end of the world, and I thought, like, oh, the code's going to end, like, when they have Mothra there, it's like, oh, so that big thing at the beginning was, like, between those two fairy girls, and Mothra's going to show yeah. up at the very end and save the day, and that's going to be, like, the code they need. But nah. Yeah, and that's what that's what I was thinking. But nope, ending on a cliffhanger but, as it turns out. To be fair, <laughs> I, I'm kind of glad it wasn't because they've been very kind of like they try at least. Like Godzilla's always had this like ooh magic, you know. But we're not going to explain shit about the fairy girls and the magic that goes there, right? But mm -hmm. I, I kind of like how no, 
it, it's all based in a science and a logic of a sense, right? Like, you know, this world's logic and this world's science, which works yeah, for but, them. But and but if the two little kinda... fairy girls, like, where magic show up at the very end of it to help save the day, it, it would kind of feel like an ass pool, really, at that point. <laughs> so... Yeah, but it's also, you know, when you have all of the Rodans kind of get coming together to form this big Rodan, and then you'd see all the moths together, it's like, Oh, so we're gonna get Matra, and then they don't go that in that direction. So it's like, you act why like giant it Rodan did shit. <laughs> giant Rodan got taken out like it was nothing. <laughs> uh, but at least he was on screen. At least there was a point for like five seconds. And Godzilla's like, bitch, no. Because he's Godzilla. <laughs> I accept that because that's yeah, but, what Godzilla I mean, does. It's you could have at least given Rodan. You could have at least given Rodan like more than five seconds. Like, even Giant Snake actually managed to hurt Godzilla a little bit. Yeah. Her dad didn't true. even get close. He just yeah, got taken out, it, like... But you, that's something I would accept, though, because we saw a lot of Rodan in the show. He was... Fair, like, he, he was, was kind of the start of it. Like, small Rodan. Yeah. Baby Rodan. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, I, I'm not necessarily sure if I'll call this Baby Rodan, because uh, the big one is just a bunch of them coming together, like the fish in Finding Nemo. <laughs> kind of, so, yeah, but... I, I, I that's guess a comparison kind of... I never thought I'll make. <laughs> the, the, the story behind this one, right? The, the premise, right, is the idea... We should jump into that a bit. Like, and the idea here is that, you know... God, it's even hard to explain when you start thinking about it. But the idea here is that... Apocalypse is coming. That's yeah, but it, it's not... Idea. You know, it's not like singular point. Like, what? Why is it called singular point? So apparently, all these different kaiju and so apparently, a professor in the past, I believe it's uh, crap. What I don't remember name? his name, but there was a guy who researched all of these creatures and kind of made predictions about the future regarding them and how how one day they'll come back Ashihara. to earth and what does it mean? Yeah, Ashihara is his so, name. Yeah, like he ended up finding a thing, like you know. They had a, a, a giant kaiju attack way in the distant past, like 50 years ago, and it destroyed his village, right? And he goes into mm -hmm. researching all that, and he ends up finding this signal. And then he ends up finding these things called singular points, where the whole kind of premise of the red dust, the red sand that these kaiju bury, bring with them to help change the world and make it inhabitable mm -hmm. for them, because when the Rodans first show up, they die whenever they get on land because they can't survive something yeah. killing them and the red sand helps them to survive the red dust does mm -hmm. so that's why they're all yep. spreading it around and creating more quote-unquote singular points in different areas and by so, the way i'm the... can can i just point out that the entire red dust thing and you know people wearing masks and you know you know flights and travels being you know going into lockdown and getting, and getting canceled it's like people really try and get covid into everything you watch recently even if it wasn't planned but I, I again i think that was also flights are being locked down because rodan's flying everywhere and they'll attack your plane if you don't want to die in the air probably don't fly yeah so i mean again that's also kind I, of what but i can see where you're coming wrong. from don't get me wrong there's a logical explanation within the show for it i'm not saying there isn't but it's also hmm to be fair, I think like everything, every time someone comes up with a, hey, there's a, 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 a thing going on, flights are canceled, people are wearing masks, and now it's always going to get compared to COVID now, because, I mean, because yeah. we live in a post-COVID world, well, not even post-COVID, we live in a not even post current I mean, COVID world. Told in, it, it, like, we thought we beat it, but now we just came back with a vengeance because of this Delta bullshit. But, well, that's because okay, people that's... are stupid, but, you know, yeah, uh, well, well, some yeah, people okay. are stupid, some people just didn't get the vaccine because other people were stupid. Yeah, but okay, this is <laughs> not the topic of the conversation. Get your vaccine, but, people. That's all we'll say here. Yeah. And wear uh, your mask. But, yeah. Save wear, a life. Wear a mask, get vaccinated, and that's it. Mm. All right, Be that's it from us. Be safe, save yeah. a life, save your life. Good to go. All right, back to Godzilla. Peace Singular out, point back to Godzilla. Where they're wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I mean, yeah, so, yeah, like so, you know, we start with Rodan, and then it comes back to we have Andres, we have the giant snakes, 
and so on and so forth. Yeah, and the, like the idea is, is so you know the original scientist Ashihara ends up finding like fifty years prior this other singular point that he's able to research and he's able to determine that he can create a supercalculator using it and he can research the future and predict the future and what might happen and he did this and an explosion happened and he disappeared come to find out mm -hmm. he was just like cast into this future alternate dimension realm i don't know what the fuck's going on there they don't really yeah, explain it again, we just kind of see him thing. at the very end this still is also researching one of those things. or maybe yeah, that was in the, the past i don't know they're not very clear about yeah. that one uh, well, they are clear about the fact that there is a sequel bait, which I will well, yeah. say so so far no season two confirmed from what I've seen. So but we'll get to that one. But uh, yeah. and yeah, like the idea is, is oh well, he was able to create this what they call the diagonal orthololyzer. Oh, God, it's yeah. a weird name, but it's supposed to be able to like destroy the red dust, and but you need to. It's basically it. It really looks like the oxygen destroyer, yeah. you know, the yeah. weapon which kills Godzilla in the original movie. Yeah. Uh, which I think that's supposed to be kind of what it's a callback to. It's just this time it oxygenizes or destroys the red dust that they use to yeah. be able mm -hmm. to live in. Yeah, even though you know it imp it impels that uh, you know that that catastrophe creature and it impels Godzilla too and both of them react to that like well, all of doesn't froze them it's like oh I've been impaled well Salunga <laughs> isn't a catastrophe creature the catastrophe is just the red dust and all the different singular yeah. points like coming together to form all the red sand that destroys yeah, that's humanity true. I, I, I got which is that's just right. <sighs> but again like right they use the super calculator Ashihara used the super calculator in the past to find a way to get the exact code needed to destroy the you know red dust except he's never able to find it so it's all it can kind of destroy the red dust but not very well until the very end of the movie where they finally find the code and we'll get there and and you kind of see the point where the premise is just it's unique it's interesting but it's just you have to Explaining it Again. probably sounds like madness because it is madness. Because... Yeah, but that's it. but that's also what kind of made the movies work. That even though the science was all was also going into, as you kind of pointed out when we reviewed the Godzilla movies, to some sort of BS. And yeah, I'm very well, yeah. much aware it's but, BS, yeah. but at the same time. But at the same time, you, you that I think again they used the the lengthier uh, the bigger time frame they had to try and make this bs not bs and it's kind of fun where you're just going on and on about science stuff because again i'm a dumb white guy i can't follow science <laughs> <laughs> and like i can follow it if you, there's this red dust that we're trying to destroy because okay cool can follow that there's this thing called the singular point which like it's kind of the prediction of where this is all started and what it means. Okay, I can I can get a bit confused, but I follow. Red dust, bad. Singular point is the thing that kind of originated uh, what we're looking for. Gotcha. Let's move along. And then they just keep on and on and on. It's like, isn't it supposed to be like a lizard dinosaur or something destroying buildings? Uh, can we go back to that? I'm a bit confused. You know, it's actually Show interesting. Show me a bone. Maybe maybe that is why it's it it feel it doesn't feel as good because they try to explain the bullshit. The older movies kind of like, you yeah. know, here's our scientific bullshit as to why this works. No one's going to question it. It just works. And that's yeah. it. And I always, you know, and again, I you, you're right. I did bring up how why does none of the scientists ever question this shit? They just accept it. <laughs> that was my yeah, big complaint. I, I, but and now you see, now you see <laughs> if they do question Fair. it. Fair. <laughs> Fair. If they, they do question they it, they made this entire show just to prove you a point, Wolf. You I guess they did. I guess I am. I guess I yeah. I am to blame for Godzilla's singular point feeling even more batshit insane because they try to explain the bullshit science when the other movies are like, Nah, fuck you. We ain't explaining shit. Just accept it. Yeah. Fair. It's my fault. Fair. <laughs> Send all of your hate mails to this guy. But mm. again, 
<laughs> but again, I'm saying I'm saying I have no problem with the concept. I just think that again, trying to over explain your scientific stuff when you know it's not realistic and you know that it's not true. Let's ease up a bit and let's have fun too, okay? It's Godzilla. We want to see monsters fight. And, you know, again, when Godzilla does show up in its, like, true form, not the iguana thing, and, and but even the iguana stuff gets a few badass moments, and, and he actually... That's actually really cool, but again, there isn't much of it. Uh, I, I did love, right? Before we got to, like, Godzilla's final form, where you see kind of that, you know, oh, this is Godzilla's blast. Like, it started off as just yeah. a ring, which was neat. I like yeah. that. That was kind of a neat little thing for, like, mm -hmm. you know, smaller form I, Godzilla that doesn't look like Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> that is which, Godzilla. you know, actually, I think it might be a reference to, like, Minya, the his son from the first series, where before he learns how to bridge fire, he breeds, like, little, like a smoke little rings. smoke rings. Yeah. Yeah, Actually, I, I think was thinking the exact been... same thing, yeah. Oh, okay. So, great which, times, maybe. But yeah, and they also, I think, had, like, a reference when you saw the Flipper Godzilla, right? The one who had flippers and yeah. swam in water when it first came on land. It breathed out, uh, like... No, actually, that, I don't think that's supposed to be him. That's supposed to be a different monster. No, that's what, that, that's what the other... That's what, that's what started off as Godzilla before it turned into, like, the... the goofy okay, right, one. right, right. No, 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 you're talking about... Some, I thought you were talking about... Okay, yeah, yeah. I got you. The, 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 the complete red one who has the flippers. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that it's just like there's just a flesh form and then he like grows the arm yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of I like a reference to Shin Godzilla, I assume. And plus, it has like how Shin Godzilla's. I wanted to see off. baby Godzilla from Shin Godzilla come back. Like, no, come on, <laughs> we don't need the yes. bus, we don't need the creepy ass looking bus back. I'm good but without it. So cute in the out. I showed you. No, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just, I'm joking. I'm half yeah, joking. Fair. I'm fair. Not. But I, I think there was also a reference to like, wasn't that thing when it first started off? It breathed like the yeah. It didn't really breathe. You know, the actual breath. Breath. It started off with like that whole gas thing that had to be lit on yeah. fire. Like yeah, this mm -hmm. Godzilla starts off with that too. Like you see it breathe out all that cold gas that freezes everything. Then. You see it instantly yeah. lit on fire and a huge explosion. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's when you start also, getting actual. Also, I love the fact that you know they they are. I I think that's one where like when they fire like uh, now he has the iguana face. It's not the flesh form. It's the he has the armor already, mm -hmm. and they and they like manage to blow up the armor, but then he kind of like goes venom on them, and there's this red flash thing arm that destroys them and it's like huh okay that's kind of cool yeah it's like a reactive protection thing that godzilla can, that yeah. this godzilla and for can some reason and for some reason all i want now is uh godzilla with the venom symbiote which i'm probably gonna draw at some point which Hold me. which i guess Hold is <laughs> which i guess is a way to like tie it back to how the singular points can read the future and predict the future you know, and mm -hmm. kind of travel into the future. And so this Godzilla has the red mist that acts as, like, that's a part of him that acts as a, a, an appendage that he can grow out to, like, capture and destroy explosives before they hit him to protect himself because he can predict the future. Kind of going yes. back to the science mumbo-jumbo, which it, it's, again, it's nice that they tie all of that in together. But as we've kind of been over, it's it becomes a bit much at a certain point. Especially when you get to the ending where you find out, you know, Jet Jaguar is overwritten and becomes, you know, like Jet Jaguar yeah. Yoon becomes Jet Jaguar PP, which is actually uh, the, the, the version of the AI that was with the girl, Mai, who went into the past yeah. to try and solve Ashihara's you that, know, at that point, math problem. At that point, I was lost. <laughs> like, and realizes... Oh wait! I forgot to do the thing that you know my creator told me to do, which was make an invincible jet jaguar, and that ends up being the solution. That is the code for how you solve and defeat the catastrophe before it destroys Earth and basically kill Godzilla. Yeah, because yeah. once Jet Jaguar sacrifices itself, you know that's how you finally destroy completely the red sand, and it's like or the red dust, and it's like I cool. 
And like, I guess you learned that, oh, the song was actually created by, you know, the AI way in the distant past. And that's where the song came from. But then you have to ask the question, well, how did, well, I it, just blur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. And again, you know, they draw all of this science mumbo jumbo at you and you have this final fight between Godzilla and King J and King Jaguar <laughs> and uh, ja Jaguar uh -huh. which is actually pretty which is actually pretty cool but again it lasts just a few seconds it ends and then all of a sudden where you get like this uh, half half epilogue of like yeah everyone's united everything's cool now uh, I guess we fixed the problem it's like um no no back up what are we doing? Where did Godzilla go? Where did the other monsters go? Is anyone going to answer this? No? Okay. Godzilla got stabbed to death by a thousand spikes. Everything's cool now, yo. Godzilla lost for once. The Jet Jaguar. Um, um, it didn't stop him before. It got stopped by all those spikes before and then reacted to it like it was nothing because it kept going. Yeah, but these spikes, stronger. these spikes are permanent though, HC. That's oh, the difference. Okay, okay, that's the difference. It's permanent. Because these spikes have like the future past, past future equation that solved it all thanks to the Jet Jaguar AI. And I, now the spikes no are permanent. <laughs> No joke, I need to lie down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm j I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> and again, it's an interesting idea. I like the plot of the show. I'm just, again, don't over-explain your bullshit because we know it's bullshit. It's escapism. It's escapism. I can... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. <laughs> But, you know, I, to talk about something, to talk about the, actually an update I really like for a second, you know, backing up to even before Godzilla shows up. Uh, I really like Engress and how they used him to explain the time travel idea that, you know, his spikes were kind of telling them what was going to happen. And they're trying to figure out how to use that in order to hurt him. And the humans actually take him in out without, without Jaguar necessarily well, that was really cool. Yeah, it's just uh, this like is the, part I really the Jaguar like. runs in with an explosive harpoon, and that's how they're able to destroy him, because it doesn't matter if he can predict it, if the shot's, like, you know, right there up in his side or in his head, right? Yeah. Can't, he can't deflect the shot or predict it or anything if it's right there. Which, which again, it, it's cool. It's just, you know... By the way, I like how in the first time where it. they think... Like, in the first time where they think they killed it, and, like, the mayor or the president is just trying to, like... You know, get oh, some yeah. publicity. Yeah, he's and just he's standing right, in front then, of it. Like, look at me. I killed this thing. And the yeah, and I, I... I hoped it would do like what Mechagodzilla did to, you know, the, the bad guy in Godzilla vs. Kong and just did and just eat him while he was talking. But uh, sadly, didn't happen. But hey, take what you can I do. expected to see a lot more deaths than what we did, considering Godzilla. But the only person who's actually... I mean, I guess you can say civilians off-screen died, right? But... The yeah. only person who's... There were those police officers by the spiders, but uh, we don't really know them, so... Yeah. I, and we don't even know if they died, either. We just, like, here's a phone call, we'll call you back later! And it's screaming happening, and shots fired, and that's it, so... Maybe they died. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Probably did. Again, off-screen, though, but the only person who's, like, confirmed dead, though, is Professor Ling, the kind of mentor to Mei for a bit, right? And the one yeah. who's, like... Yeah. She was the closest to solving Ashihara's stuff, and then May came yeah. along, and it's like, well, yeah, you're gonna die. Okay. Yeah, and she and died it. saving a cat. Yeah, which, is... which I, I guess, yeah. like, it's to show, like, oh, she cares a lot, you know, but it's kind of like, yeah. I, I don't know, lady, I don't think that cat was worth it, even if that little kid misses her cat. Oh, just you wait. In season two, there will be an entire BS science explanation to how this cat is the savior of saviors. No, what it's going to be is she's the cat now from the future. From the past, oh, future past, past future. <laughs> she was teleported to the Batman universe and became Catwoman. Uh -huh. And it all comes back somehow. <laughs> Batman stops God yeah. Batman stops Mechagodzilla. <laughs> yeah, he wish. <laughs> uh, okay, but uh, just one thing. I one thing I actually wanted to say. Uh, regarding man, I had something. 
I had something. Well, oh, okay. So, okay. are we gonna? Can we talk about the post credits for a second? Yeah, I just mentioned Mecha Godzilla, so go ahead. Yeah, because another thing that throughout this entire show, they also build up this one guy go, finding like what appears to be a Godzilla skeleton in yeah, that some was sort like, of basement. That was the thing that Ashihara saw fifty years prior and was yeah. researching, and what led him down mm-hmm. his madness. Yeah. And we find out in a post credit scene that they're using this skeleton to to build a Mecha Godzilla. And also now, at the very end, like you see, Ashihara wasn't gone. He's right there because they show like his, yeah, uh, him at the very end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, so here's the thing: why, for one, if this is all you were gonna do with uh, with uh, with that skeleton tease, why do it now? Again, just feels one of those things you could have cut, and nobody and nobody would have bet an eye. This could oh. have been the opening to season two for all we know. I uh, mean, again, they we, want to get you hyped for season two, right? Like it's yeah, coming, guys. But, totally coming. Yeah, but you know, but you know, wouldn't that hype wouldn't it have hype you up more if you just saw the skeleton and then you're not sure if it was the Godzilla that uh, Hashirama saw. Or, or if it's uh, the skeletons of the Godzilla, we just start fighting Jet Jaguar because we don't necessarily know what happened to I, it. I think what would have worked is like you saw them take the skeleton away, right? You saw like the the fake journalist guy, you know, take the still mm-hmm. the skeleton away and everything. I think what would have worked is you show fake journalist guy meeting with the CEO blonde, you know, the blonde CEO dude who's. Yeah. Also looks totally evil, turns out to be kind of not evil, but then you get the post credit scene and it's like, oh, he's helping build Mecha Godzilla, so maybe he is a little bit evil. Like, yeah. I don't know. But he's somewhere in there anyways. And I think what would have worked is you saw the journalist fellow meeting meeting with him and meeting with Ashihara, and Ashihara kind of coming out of the shadows a little bit to meet with them as well, and then end, mm-hmm. and you just see the skeleton in the back somewhere. Right, and Ashihara smiling, because <clears throat> that's kind of what they show you here. <clears throat> you just don't show the yeah. Mecha Godzilla being built part, and you just show yeah, Ashihara well, walking just... in because Ashihara is supposed to yeah. be like the big shadow figure scientist in the background of all this. Whether he's mm-hmm. good, bad, you don't really know what his deal is at all, but you just know he's kind of the progenitor of a lot of it. So, mm-hmm. and with that said, there's also there's also this entire that. thing, yeah, and there's also the side which. I'm not sure, maybe because we, it's the it's like the uh, this is technically the fourth time we're saying this, but I think I'm just kind of burned out on the entire the army is building Mecha Godzilla to fight Godzilla at some point because or the secret agency that is protecting the yeah, world. Yeah, because because we saw it in the in the second series, we saw it in the Millennium series, we just saw it in Godzilla vs Kong. We're really doing this again. Yes. Well, listen, you, you have yeah, to have suppose. Godzilla, then you have to go to Mecha Godzilla, who they lose control of and runs Rampage. Yeah. I, that way, Godzilla I, I can come back and be the good guy. Don't get me wrong. I, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that it will get season two and they'll go there. It will look great and everything. But yeah. also, I think maybe it's just because again, Godzilla vs Kong isn't even a year old movie, but at the time of this recording, so maybe I'm just <laughs> burnt out on the idea because I just saw it again. I would say this first season feels like a lot of setup, right? Because of all the explanation for everything we're doing with the yeah. whole, you know, hey, Which we again... made this new material called the archetype that can defy the different laws of gravity and physics and time and space and blah 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 from the red mist or red dust so you know i i think right you know they have that going on they have the whole telling you know predicting the future with the super calculator and predicting and so, going back into and predicting the past and blah 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 like they have all these different little things they give you going on that mm-hmm. you never feel completely satisfied with the answer you're given entirely and you feel like there's more here to learn potentially so I and feel like the first season something... is set up to like, hey, here's all the stuff you need to know. Now we're going to get into the second season where you kind of have all this stuff down now. So now you can, now we can really get into it is what I'm hoping Agreed. for. 
I'm with you on that. And but also talking about this in terms of if there is a season two, what would we want to see necessarily? I mean, so... it, yeah, that kind of brings up the question because it it feels like Godzilla has been defeated. It feels like the red dust has been kind of quote unquote defeated. The catastrophe has yeah, been quote unquote defeated. Yeah, but again, defeated. it's not. Uh, but if it's really defeated. Why do we still? Why are they still building Mecha Godzilla? And you, you know, we do get to get at least that uh, Hashihara is there. Mm -hmm. So what's the deal with that? Obviously, there's more story to tell here, and more to explore. So in terms of what I would personally want to see them do, for one, as much as I enjoyed the build up in this season, I think you had the build up. You pr you tried it. You pr you you. For the most part, did well with it. Give us give us more of Godzilla now and explore what exactly is his connection to the singular point. What was that skeleton? What was what exactly does he have to do with all of those prophecies and all of is this research and stuff? Ashihara good or evil? Is this Nega yeah. Ashihara from the alternate dimension? Yeah, that too. Because that's a thing that exists. Because these kaiju aren't from regular Earth; they're from a different dimension somehow. Yep. Because you know we exactly. didn't mention that, but that's also a part of it too. <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, so. Another thing I want to see: okay, you you teased the Mecha Godzilla, and we kind of got a piece from Mothra. So yeah, let's see. Are we going to see more that... Mothra? Yeah, like, uh, are we gonna see any other monsters? Like, are we gonna see Ghidorah at some point? Are we gonna see, you know, anyone else? Like, um, I'm trying to think about all the classic enemies right now, and we basically mentioned all the popular ones. Like, we had Rodan in this. It, are, are we so, gonna see, you know, actual King Kongs? So you're just gonna be more, you know, totally not I, King Kong Kong. I doubt, I doubt that, that we're gonna see Kong in itself because from what i know the copyright around kong is like very convoluted mm. very much messy so i i'm not sure this is gonna happen in a, in another japanese production so we'll like see something totally that, not king kong king kong again then okay yeah fair probably and but you know more monsters obviously and the other thing i want to see i'm half joking about this but i hope even if I, even if just for complete loon, loon, like a complete loony science fiction, no way you can actually explain this bullshit. That with all the time travel stuff and like going here to become this, to do this, that they find some sort of way to bring Sirazawa from the legendary Godzilla into this universe after he quote unquote dies in King of the Monsters and just and just open the world to like an into the Godzilla verse or something. Can you imagine? Alright, no fair, because again, like the whole thing is is like they're not from this universe, they're from a separate universe that is like connected yeah, so somehow. Not... So yeah, yeah, no, that's so fair. Go all the way would... with it. Yeah, have fun with it. You know, if the kaiju can travel universes, maybe other people can too. Maybe the Ashihara that we see at the end is like the Nega Ashihara from the evil universe. That's why he's yeah. building Mega Godzilla to, you know, restart the singular point and rebring upon the catastrophe to reconnect the universes or some bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, again, there's potential to the story here, which I'm actually interested in seeing. Well, are they going to take all of this? I, I think the, the potential comes from the idea that they can just run wild with it. So yeah. if they don't yeah, run wild with the, it, it may not be as enjoyable. Though, yeah, at the same time, though, I will say this, that as much as it's going to be fun and amazing to see them run wild with it, I don't need them to over-explain this thing again. Focus on what people want to see. Give us a quick, even if it's a bullshit explanation, keep it as that. Don't bullshit the bullshit and just give us fun. And give us give us the thing we want and we came out to see. And on that note, I kind of hope what they would actually do what the legendary movies did. And it's just that, okay, we spent the first, in this case, the first season building up Godzilla, but not seeing much of him. So in the second season, I kind of hope that, okay, now that we know that this thing exists and stuff, 
we'll see more of him. Kind of like what King of the Monsters did compared to Godzilla 2014. I don't know. I kind of hope they do bullshit the bullshit more. <laughs> uh, no, like, you know what? Depends on how much they try. Depends. I know. Because, I want them to do it because, because it I want to a... have to come back and explain that premise to people and people hear it and they'll be like, the fuck? I'm like, yeah, you know, no, it's completely you know true. The, <laughs> you know, you know, the people who are most likely listening to this already saw the show. So you just, so they just heard you explain. Nah, there's at least one or saw, two of so. them out there that listen to this first before they went and watch it. And they're like, the fuck? <laughs> Say again, please. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. my answer to you is go watch it. You'll understand it as about as well as I do, which is zero to one percent. I like these odds, not really, but I don't know. I had a joke, and I, I, my brain is fried at this point. Too much science. Too much science. Listen, to, you know, um, I, I'm sure there's like big brain fellow or you know lady. Yeah. Out there who can give me, explain give it me all Godzilla, me. give me Godzilla singular point and Jimmy Neutron crossover. No oh, god. <laughs> hey, well, we have like the alternate universe thing, like it's transdimensional, so maybe. Again, they, the greatest uh, crossover is... in our time, ladies and gentlemen, Godzilla singular point. <laughs> again, again, into the Godzilla those. Let's do this. We have the memes. Uh, just again, okay. You spent the first uh, season explaining all of this. Now let uh, let us also explore it to the best we can. Mm -hmm. Don't explain everything. We know what this thing is. Let's just go with it. Yeah. If uh, again, though, at the time of this recording, season two is not confirmed. I I just hope we'll hear that it's coming at some point. And whenever it comes, we'll be here to talk about it. I mean, it, it's yeah. I, 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 I'm definitely. Excuse me. I'm, I'm definitely interested in a second season. I, I think it'll be a lot more fun. I think you know they've done their setup, so you know I, I, I'm curious to see what a second season would be, what it would involve, and where would they would and where they would go. I'm, I'm hoping our characters become a bit more fleshed out and a bit more developed than what they were. And we, we see more of their traits and more of their personalities start to shine through because, as I said, May and Yoon feel kind of dull to a degree, especially Yoon. Mm -hmm. May sticks out a bit. There's a bit more to her. But, like, you know, I also just want to see more of the adorable, you know, uh, prof you know Professor BB and that lovely face and those lovely facial expressions of his, but also his daughter because she was great. Just little girl just driving down the road and... You know, yeah. you hear this college By student way, ask her, like, do you need me to drive? She's like, oh, you can't handle this car. It's very particular. And this, like, she can't even see yeah. over the dash, but she's driving. It's yeah. just, uh, that's how nonchalant actually, this girl is. I love her. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the, uh, I, I was kind of ready for you to mention this because I'm not sure if it's true or not. If it's bullshit and uh, somebody corrects me in the comments or anything, but I've heard that apparently in Japan you can start learning how to drive as soon as you're tall enough to reach the wheel. And I guess she got I guess she skipped a few classes because she's still not fully reaching that wheel. But the thing is though is she doesn't live in Japan. She lives in like Dubai. That's where her and her dad live. So Yeah, but what I mean though is that it's made by Japan and Japanese people. Fair. Maybe that's just how they see the entire world. I don't fair, know. Fair, fair. You know, go with what you know, I guess. But yeah, it, it's... I love how silly those two characters are. I think they have the most personality out of a lot of the cast. And the the girl, you don't see her very much if at all until kind of the, the, the you know, last half, uh, last quarter of the show, really. Mm -hmm. But that little bit has just so much character to her. And I feel like that's kind of what the main cast needed. You kind of had that a bit with the older scientist dude, you know, Otaki. You know, he, he definitely had a personality to him, and his design was just goofy as hell, but lovely. And, and mm -hmm. again, right, like, I'm hoping second season we get way more character focus. You know, we get 
more character focused. This first season, I would say, felt more story slash world building focused. So I'm hoping the second season, we have more of the characters and we have more of just, okay, let's just show Godzilla duking it out with whoever Godzilla got to duke it out with so we can see some of the really good animation for the fight scenes and just some of the, again, unique stuff they came up with. I loved the whole, like, hey, here's Godzilla's beam as it forms circles, right? And all you see all the tail and everything lighting up like normal, and you hear yep. that sound it makes, but then you see the beam come out through the circles and everything. Again, there's a lot of great stuff and really fun and interesting ideas that are fairly unique to the show that they take it with and do with, but you just don't get to see a lot of it. And that's kind of the Agreed. sad part. Mm -hmm. with that, that said I think we pretty much covered everything mm -hmm. yeah I mean so, I, I guess we can ask yeah. like you know, favorite episode uh, it's hard to pick one favorite because again it's one of those shows that each episode connects to the other so yeah, it feels very like it's kind of like a four to five hour movie more than a show yeah so, so it's hard to pick an episode where again it, it's because it's like it's like a one. It's like a, when we talked about a lot of shows recently, we where well, all the episodes are not uh, are not really standalones. Like uh, one leads right to the other, so it's hard to pick. Well, but let me ask I you guess any particular. I, yeah, but I guess yeah. But I guess though, like I think it was episode eleven where <laughs> Godzilla is already like add. You know, he already looks like himself, and we get like some of the more fight scenes and we're starting to like you feel like you're getting to the to the solution to the mystery and everything i think that this is the one i would choose if oh. i remember the number correctly i think you got it yeah well i mean let me ask you this then instead instead of favorite episode or least favorite episode how about we do any particular favorite moment that stood out to you um i just think that you know out of all the character, main characters like human characters we had in that in the Godzilla universe i think may really grew on me as a main character because okay. um i really like her i like her or i like that computer cat thing which is basically an ai that talks and that talks to her pelops too yeah he was great fun little like the mascot <laughs> character essentially yeah very fun. Yeah. Uh, I also like that old guy that basically he, that that's like you can tell he's way past his prime, but he's still pretending like he's twenty years old and everything. Oh, talking. He, yeah, he was great. Yeah, he was pretty. He was fun. Uh, I think uh, though the one thing I'll take away from this is that like you know talk about uh, talk about taking something as ridiculous as Jet Jaguar, which people love because of how stupid he is, and actually making him. Uh, the hero of the show in a lot of ways. Yeah, and it gets the self sacrifice play at the end. Like, you know, it's like, oh, you know. It reminded me of, it reminded me, have you seen the movie Chappie? Maybe it's been a while, I think. Uh, but I it, reminded, it reminded me of that, but good. <laughs> fair. If it's, if it's what I'm thinking of, fair. I think for myself, I'll say favorite moment I can point out was I loved when they were traveling to when it was Professor BB, his daughter and May traveling to the singular point, and they're traveling across this old rickety wooden bridge deal that Ashihara made in the past, and those two are just kind of walking along, talking, and you see May like grasping along the rope along the wall because she's afraid to fall, and those two are just hopping along like precarious jumps. The daughter and the professor just explaining everything to her and talking and like very casual about how dangerous the entire ordeal is zero cares given i kind of love that and again it just shows a lot more of their characters right so i think that was one of my personal favorite moments because again you like you got a bit of character de development you know, a character moment there from may and you got this stuff from the professor and his daughter as well which was just fun yeah so yeah, like overall, more stuff like I, that, like small stuff that shows that character more is what I would really want to see from season two. And more way, there's another there's another part I just want to quickly point out. Well, they bring uh, May to uh, like uh, Hariyama's uh, library, and they are just like, well, these are all uh, these are all of his notes. Have fun, and they just throw it into all of these books and stuff. It's like, uh, look through all of them; you'll find something to figure out. Like, yeah, good. And then you see uh, like reading a book slowly and like the phelps too i think that's a, like just you see you see that thing just devour a book in a second and i'm like 
good thing she has the she has him otherwise um she wouldn't be out of there in time mm-hmm. so yeah that's another thing yeah. well i guess i guess overall uh this was all for this episode of the outcast we hope you enjoyed what do you think about godzilla singular point what do you like what you liked disliked about this honestly really unique take on godzilla what would you like to see in season two you can tell us all about it in the comment section below on our tumblr which is belgas theme and on our twitter which is belgas with the cover of b capital c so until next time i was hc i was wolf and we will see you all next time take care bye